Mr. Deputy Chairman, first of all, I uh, wish to express my appreciation and uh, thanks to the Prime Minister and the Minister for Edu uh, Human Resource Development to have established for the first time a central university on Sanskrit. Mr. Deputy Chairman, I would first like to begin by referring to the Constitution because we have all taken oaths under the Constitution, and therefore we have to abide by it. And those who are speaking against the Constitution should either resign and go from this house or accept what I'm about to read from the Constitution. Article 343, Chapter 17. The official language of the Union shall be Hindi in Devanagari script. Now, Devanagari is the script of Sanskrit. Then, Article 351, which says something even more. It says that uh, for uh, the expressions used in Hindi and other languages of India specified in the Eighth Schedule uh, and by drawing wherever necessary and desirable for its vocabulary, primarily from Sanskrit. So therefore, the Hindi, which is an official Hindi, has to be based on Sanskrit vocabulary and shall use the Sanskrit script, which is Devnagri, which is also used by Marathi, which is also used by Nepali, and of course today, Hindi and Sanskrit. So four languages use uh, the Devnagri script. But, and Konkani, which doesn't have a script of its own, has adopted Sanskrit, uh, Devanagari. And the other languages' scripts also draw from the Sanskrit formulations of the Devanagari script. For instance, they all, because they all come from Brahmi, this is common. Take Tamil, if you write Ka, you write like that. If you want to uh, say Ki, you put a Matra. If you want to say ku, you put a matra under. As the same thing in Devanagari also. You write ka and ki, you put a matra and a ku under. So there was a period of time when all these languages were connected. But today, <clears throat> those people who say that Sanskrit is a dead language are they themselves intellectually dead. Because I can show you what is happening in the West regarding Sanskrit. I went to, for the, sake of, for the sake of availability, I tested my knowledge with Google, and I typed on it, Sanskrit and, app and artificial intelligence. And I got a reference to the NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Agency, United States, whose journal, Journal of Artificial Intelligence, has an article by their director called BRICS, B-R-I-G-G-S, who says after 20 years of research on how to restore knowledge in the, in the computer so that it can be used for artificial intelligence. It can be used in a computer-controlled uh, uh, robot. And this is what he concludes. 20 years they search for language, because in, uh, if you use English in uh, storing knowledge in a computer, the, and then it, uh, in future uh, sentences are used from English, the computer will get confused, because P-U-T put and B-U-T but. So there is a, a, a phonetic difference, and the computer gets, the robot gets confused. So therefore, he says that <clears throat> there is at least one language. This is from Google after typing Sanskrit and artificial intelligence. Anybody can do it. If you type that, you will get an article of BRICS, and it says there is at least one language, Sanskrit, which for the duration of almost 1,000 years was a living spoken language with considerable literature of its own. Beside works of literary value, there's a long philosophical and grammatical tradition 
that has continued to exist with undiminished vigor until present century. Among the accomplishments of the grammarians can be reckoned a method of paraphrasing Sanskrit in a manner that is identical not only in essence, but in form with the current work on artificial intelligence. So now NASA has made a teaching of Sanskrit compulsory if you want to study artificial intelligence. Then, please. Then, please. Then it's a journal of the uh, NASA. Uh, uh, you, you, I know. I know. Please, in, it's, it I know in uh, Congress party. Let him speak. Let him speak, please. 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 Go and read the comments. Yes, please. Take it. Please. Then I also heard, I also heard, and then I went Please. to London. <laughs> ah, we, are help, we are helping each other Please, to come please, on please. <laughs> there are no messy money. Please. Uh, please. Now, I, I also came to know that there is a school in, very famous school in uh, London by name St. James School. It's a pure white school in the sense only uh, people who are from the uh, in English Anglo-Saxon community are, are members of, the, I mean, students there. I went to London to check up what I'd heard, that in that school, children between the ages of 6 to 11, every morning are made to recite for half an hour Sanskrit shlokas. And I saw it myself. Then I, checked with, then I checked with Google. Do they have that? Google also has, if you type Sanskrit and St. James School, London, you will get the entire thing, including a video of children reciting Sanskrit, uh, uh, Sanskrit uh, words. Why? Why are they teaching it? Because the principal says that my research shows that if between the ages of 6 to 11, children recite Sanskrit shlokas of a particular kind, their brain development is superior to anybody else's. That is why I have made it compulsory. And this is something that congressmen should learn. Please learn some Sanskrit shlokas. Your brain will improve. Mr. Deputy Chairman, the question of Sanskrit and Tamil has been raised here. Now, if you see the dictionary of Tamil to any other language and compare it with Sanskrit, you will find 40% of the words between Tamil and Sanskrit are common. Now, I'm not making a, passing a comment on where it came from, whether Sanskrit took it from Tamil or the other. Now, Mr. Vaiko should not speak. His original name was Vai Gopal Swami, which is a Sanskrit word. Please. Now he is. Please, please. Go. In, in, in Tamil, in, in Tamil, in Tamil, in Tamil, the word for election symbol, in, in Tamil, the word for election symbol is chinnam. Chinnam. And what is in Sanskrit? Chin. And what is the DMK's, DMK's uh, uh, symbol called in Tamil? Udayan Suryan. Uday Surya. They have copied it from Sanskrit. So, therefore, therefore, Karuna Nidhi, Karuna Nidhi's name is Sanskrit. Karuna Nidhi's name is Sanskrit. Ramaswami Nayaka, his name is from Sanskrit. They can't get names from anywhere else. And Vaiko is, uh, why Gopal Swami is now hiding behind Vaiko. <laughs> so, I, I'll please, just please, please. so, first of all, please. Son, please. Yeah. Please. Subramanya. Dr. So Swami, you please address the chair. Please, go your mouth record for the jacket. Dr. Swami, Dr. Swami, you address the chair. Swami, you have only Sanskrit three minutes <laughs> now. Please, please conclude. Now, please conclude. Now, now you see, the, the two great, very well known judges of the Supreme Court, one was uh, Justice A.K. Ganguly, 
and the other was uh, Mark and De Katu. They have a judgment in 2004, which is reported judgment, where they have devoted several pages to say that it is a great misfortune for this country that the logic used in courts is based on English law. And then they quoted from Mimamsa, how you can get different meanings from the same thing by, because of the knowledge of Sanskrit. So they advocate that even in the courts of India in the future date, the language of arguments should be based on Sanskrit. So this is something which I am not saying, the judges of the Supreme Court are saying. So therefore, I would say, now that, now, now, please. now. Nothing will go on record, please. You conclude now, your time will be over. So most of them are illiterates, what can I do? Please, please continue. <laughs> Dr. Mr. Rang Rajan, nothing will go on record. Please conclude now. Please conclude now. Please. So therefore, in conclusion, I request our minister that now that a central ministry, a central university has been created, let him ensure that every Kendriya Vidyalaya has an option to learn Sanskrit, whether it is in Tamil Nadu or is in Kashmir. And yes, option only. And there's also a very easy way to learn Sanskrit, and that is from Sanskrit Bharati which can teach you to, uh, 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 to speak a few sentences of Sanskrit in just 10 days. So these agencies should also be incorporated and seen that the spread of Sanskrit is as quickly as possible and that in all our languages, we use a maximum number of Sanskrit words because that will unite the country. Dev Nagari is not Hindi as, uh, as many, uh, people who are not well read uh, are, uh, 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 are saying Dev Nagri script Dev Nagri script is, now, is used by Hindi it is used by Marathi it is used by uh, Nepali and I think if all milestones in our country have Thanks. Dev Dr. Nagri Swami script it will be very easy for people to travel from Thank north you. to south Thank therefore you. now onwards let us develop the Sanskrit language with full vigor, without any hesitation. Thank you.